Good morning everyone, it's Sunday the 31st of January today, which means it's a month since I last posted a blog, or vlog, should I say, and I can't believe how fast the time has gone. And I'm publishing this on Thursday this week, so it's very last minute, and my apologies, my plan was to gradually film different little bits over the month and then put them together in a sort of a montage. But as I said on my last video, I have started working in our local field hospital as a domestic. And I started that job just before Christmas on the 21st of December. And uh, it's full-time hours at the moment, so I'm going in by seven in the morning and I finish at three. And my plan was, oh, that's great, by three o'clock and come home, have a little rest, and then I can start some editing. The fact of the matter is, I am absolutely shattered. I didn't think I was going to be as tired as I am. And I'm enjoying the work, I really am. And I love getting up early. We've got a great routine now, me and Richard. We both get up quarter to six in the morning. Richard comes down and does the coffee, and I get ready. And then we have a cup of coffee together, usually watch the news, Sky News, for all the depressing updates. Um, we leave the house about sort of 20 to 7, so I get into work for 7. Um, and for those 9 hours, <laughs> I don't stop. It is literally, it's not hard, it's, it's hard work, it's good honest graft to be honest. But, you know, I'm not worn out it's just long it's long hours and I'm on my feet the whole time and I'm doing on average at least 10,000 steps a day which is a big bonus of the job for me really is the fact that it's getting me exercising and I'm getting paid for it so I do I love that aspect of it um but by the time I come home Richard picks me up at three I don't take the bongo to work um so Richard's giving me lifts by the time I come home at three o'clock I have to go to bed. I have a shower, I put my pyjamas on and I go to bed. I am absolutely, I can barely speak. Um, so then I normally have at least an hour's nap. Um, and then I get up, all intentions of doing some editing, but it doesn't usually work out because I usually just like a cabbage on the sofa. So today's Sunday and it's a chill day for me. Having said that, I've got a little job to do today, which involves going out in the bongo. Yay! Teddy's do her annual booster jabs, so we'll be going to the vets in the van. I also took the van out yesterday to do the week, the weekly shop, and that is pretty much the routine. I go to work Monday to Friday, do the shop for me and my mother on a Saturday in the van, which is a real treat, uh, and then Sunday is normally a chill out day and I do a bit of cooking um, using a slow cooker quite a lot to prep meals really for the week and then Richard cooks in between as well so between us we've got a nice a nice little routine going I think and the good thing is being up early in the morning I am noticing it's lighter in the mornings now and it's getting um, staying a bit lighter when I come home so I feel we're on the right side of Christmas and all the dark, dark days of winter and we're heading into spring. Can you hear the birds singing a little bit now? 
So my thoughts are turning to the possibility of travel again and I'm thinking with eventually with the warmer weather come in. Hello Teddy. I'm feeling that we may be able to get a bit of travel in this year. Admittedly I don't think it's going to be abroad and I have been watching a few YouTube videos over the last few weeks and everyone seems to be heading to Portugal which has always been one of my favourite destinations in Europe, I love Portugal, and I think if I was travelling long term in the van, I would be heading there. I love Portugal. And everyone seems to be going there now. All the van lifers who live full time in their vans are, are buying plots of land in Portugal, so I'm loving watching all of that. I don't think I'll be going to Portugal, but I am hoping that some travel in the UK will be possible. So my very rough plan is to carry on doing the job um, for the next three months, which takes me up to May, really. And if all is well, and if the virus is able to get under control, and we're able to travel, at least in the UK, then I will finish work and take a couple of months off and do the plan, um, some trips around the UK, Nothing final on where, no doubt it will involve a fair bit of Wales. And so yeah, that's giving me a bit of hope and a bit of planning, where to go, etc. And I imagine it's going to be pretty busy in the UK this year because I think most people will be wanting to stay home. So I'll be avoiding um, probably most coastal areas. And yeah, but anyway, that's, that's all to come. Um, my plan for today is take Teddy to the vet, as I say. I'm also going to be making a, a chicken pie using my slow cooker, so I shall be putting that together now. And then the majority of the day will be spent um, answering some questions as I go about my day. I've had, um, I put a, a message on Instagram and I asked on my last video for, for you guys to ask any questions. So I've had a few, thank you very much. So I will be um, answering those questions today and um, yeah, spending the rest of the day editing, no doubt, ready for Thursday and um, hope you're all doing well, by the way. It seems an awfully long time since I posted that last video and I do miss all the comments I get because normally when I put a video up I get a couple of comments, which is lovely. So I look forward to seeing all of your comments again, I hope. Uh, later in the week. Right, come on, we better get you ready for the vet, haven't we, Tads? Yes. <laughs> okay, time for respite of the day. Um, go out in the bongo. I'm going to take Teddy to the vets. Get a booster. Cost me an arm and a leg, this dog, honestly. <sighs> come on, then. Well, that was nice, wasn't it? Little drive in the bongo, and we're outside uh, Pets at Home now, which is uh, the in-store vets is where Teddy goes, um, and she's looking very scruffy again. That's lockdown looks for you. <laughs> you and me both, isn't it, Teddy? <laughs> yeah. So we got a couple of minutes to spare before we go in, um, but that's fine because. It's a lovely excuse to sit and have a little look around the van again. We're back in the van and she's all... You're all vaccinated for another year, aren't you? Hey? Yeah, I got her flea and worm a treatment as well. And she's within her ideal weight, which is good, because she looks a bit tubby, but I think that's just because she's... hair's overgrown, really. Um, but while we were there, it's a lovely pets at home store and um, loads of toys and silly nonsense. So I got her a couple of treats, um, cheese, chocolate, salmon and a real mixed bag really. So as you were a good girl, we'll give you a treat. Let's see which one she's going to choose. I've got um, 
a marrow bone thing or a a chocolate one. <laughs> right down. So you can have one. Wait, wait. Now, which one would you like? That one or that one? Oh, the meaty one. Oh, no. Oh. The chocolate one. <laughs> and you can have that one as well, aren't you? <laughs> and since we're in the car park legitimately, because we've been to the vets, it seems like an ideal opportunity to sit in the van for a little bit, answer a couple of questions while I'm here, and yeah, just tidy up because yeah, there's a few things that I haven't put away since um, the last time I was in here. So yes, on to our question. Okay, the first question came from on Instagram from PJ Kent, and PJ asked, what's the pros and cons of a kitchen at the back versus at the side of the bongo? Now, obviously my kitchen is at the back and I know lots of people who've got kitchens at the side. So I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. It's really down to preference. The reason I chose um, a rear kitchen, because when I had the van, it was unconverted. So I started from scratch really. Um, the reason I chose the rear kitchen was because I wanted a wider bed um, with the narrow kitchens that were available at the time it really did reduce the width but I know some converters now have got these sort of super slim ones that go on the side and you can access the fridge while you're in bed and everything so they look great but mine's already done and I'm quite happy with it um, and yeah, I, I quite like accessing the cool box from the rear so that when I've gone shopping, sometimes you can just whack things straight inside because it's got cupboard doors that open back and front. Um, but there are other advantages with, with having the side kitchen, I guess. If anyone is in questioning which they need, my advice when we're able, um, go to some meats or go to a specialist that sells bongos and have a good nosy around and really I think in when I was buying this van I didn't spend enough time looking at all the options in fact I think probably six years ago seven years ago there weren't that many options so I ended up with the unconverted which was great and I'm glad I did that but as you know with my story previously the roof um, didn't work for me and um, I wasted um, quite a bit of money having a pop top when I'm much happier with the high top so don't make an expensive mistake really do your homework have a look at other people's vans think about how you are gonna use your van how many people you're gonna have in here is it just you um, in which case the width of the bed might not be so important if it's a family, obviously you really want to create as much space as possible in here. But yeah, I don't think one is better than the other. I think it really is um, an individual thing. And the next question has come from Niggle Moth. Niggle Moth asks about plates and cups. Do you take melamine or plastic or real ones when you, when you go um, away? Um, and do you leave them in the van or do you just pack them for the trip? Well, I've tried an assortment of mugs. I don't like melan melaline, mel I can't even say it now, melamine um, plates and cups. I did do that when I first had a van. I went and bought camper van ones and they had all the, the camper van um, design on there. Um, and I just... I didn't like them in the end and the plates were never big enough and yes um, so I have moved on now and I've moved on to neither melaline, <laughs> melamine <laughs> or plastic or real in fact what I use as plates are these and they're enamel or metal I'm not sure which I got these from home bargains and they're quite nice, these are plates, but they're quite, they've got a bit of a lip on them, so it does stop spillages if you're parked in a, a slightly wonky position. And I've got the bowls as well for cereal. So I bought two each because there's usually just me and Richard in the van, so two, two each is enough. Otherwise, you can go overboard and start over collecting crockery and bits and pieces. So, yes, um, 
metal it is for me in plates and cups. And then I've got an assortment of serving bowls and knickknacks that end up in the van. My shells I've talked about previously. These came um, with scallops from Marks and Spencers and they were too lovely to throw away. So I do quite like bringing those out now and again. And then I've got this little, um, this is melamine actually. Um, and that's for like crisps and snacks. Big advantage with, with melamine is it's light virtually indestructible so yeah I can definitely see the advantage it's just that I've never found plates and cups in a design I like um, without them being too party or, or garden um, style really so and the other thing is one of my one of my quirks I do have quite a few quirks but one of the other quirks is I don't particularly like eating off overly patterned plates I like to see my food and so I like a plain in the house I like white plain white plates. Um, black works well here. Now as for mugs, um, again with the melamine mugs I did um, have those initially. What I find is in the van if you make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea even in the summer when the weather's warm it goes cold far too quickly. Now I don't mind tea or coffee sort of on the lower edge of, of heat but it just, it goes cold way too quickly. So again, it's from Home Bargains again. Um, I get these bamboo cups and they've got the, the little silicone lid and they seem to insulate quite well. Um, and they, they are lovely and light. This is the second lot I've bought because the first lot, they do crack, so they're not indestructible, but they were less than two pounds each. So I do quite, quite like them and also they're quite stylish looking and they do fit in the cup holders as well glasses is the exception if i'm having a glass of wine i do like to have glass a plastic wine glass doesn't work for me now the danger of carrying glass obviously is it's breakable and when you're driving around the potential is your glass is going to smash so i do compromise a little bit and I have these stubby glasses that are, I don't know, a couple of pennies in Ikea. Um, they're sturdy enough that they don't really rattle or knock around. The other thing with these plastic wine glasses, what I found is they're so tall. So they're completely top heavy. So they're always flopping over, which is a nightmare when you're camping. So little sturdy ones. We did buy, when we went to France in the van, these little, um, really little stumpy glasses, but inevitably they do end up getting broken more often when we take them in the house to wash um, so I'm, I'm reduced to these now but these these are for any cold drinks and and wine really now as to your question of whether I leave them in the van or take them I leave them in the van when I come home I take them in the house then and give them a good wash because usually on a campsite the water isn't always ideally hot so I take them in the house and as you can see from the last time I was in the van they don't get put away then I just open the door and, and shove them in so I will tidy up a little bit today but ideally I my dream is to if I want to go out for the day um, is just leave the house and have everything in the van bring in water I use these little collapsible containers because water doesn't hang around it'll get stale and smelly um, but crockery cutlery oh talking of cutlery I haven't mentioned my cutlery um, I like to have them in the van and because I've got cupboards here that's perfect if you don't have cupboards what I night what I did before I had cupboards um, you can get little flat plastic boxes with lids that I used to stow under the seats and yeah it's um, when you've got a small van it's difficult having everything you need without compromising and sort of using up all your space i get that it is a challenge again um look for ideas on on facebook but yeah that's that's it for me i aim to keep mine in the van in the cupboard so that they're there when i need them i haven't mentioned cutlery i keep mine up in my rack there again i initially had the melamine um picnic cutlery um, I've moved on to these. These were just from Tesco's. I think they were £15 for a four set, so four spoons, forks, knives and um, 
jaunty little red stripe. Yeah, these work perfectly well for me. And then I keep things like a whisk in the van, spatulas and things just for cooking. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, Nigglemore. And just sitting here, it sounds as though there's like sleety stuff coming down. And we, we were forecast snow for today, so I'm not sure if it's going to come to anything, but I think we're going to head back home and uh, continue the questions on the driveway. Quite unbelievable, but in the 10 minutes it's taken us to leave the car park at the vets and get home. The snow is coming down really thick. So um, yeah, I think we're gonna head in. And uh, thank goodness we weren't far away. They, were, they did forecast snow, but to be honest, I didn't really think it was cold enough. But there you go, yeah. Here we go again. to stay in to do the rest of the questions. So I've come in my little workroom here, which is the room Holly stays in when she's here. She's not here at the moment though, so I'm using it as my film studio. <laughs> so yes, I'm gonna answer another question while I'm here. Next question, Maureen has asked, what has been your best and worst trip in your bongo. I think the worst trip, and it wasn't really an awful trip, but um, quite early on we'd had the van about a year and I thought it would be really good fun to go to France in the van um, and I thought it would be great to take our teenagers as they were then, um, 16 year old kids with us. Um, the van was unconverted at the time and we went, we sailed from Plymouth and yeah, it was such a squeeze. Um, it was an eight-seater but there were two adults, three teenagers and all of the stuff and we had a lot of stuff. The We had to take a big awning and yeah, all the gear because we didn't have any cupboards so it was boxes for everything. Once we got over to France, uh, we stayed in um, Brittany for the first couple of days and the weather wasn't great there, quite rainy and yeah, three teenage kids, they, they get bored don't they? So yeah, it was, it was a bit dreary. The campsite we stayed on, I made the mistake of booking a fairly large campsite before we left and when they showed us the pitch that we had it was tiny and we were all so tired by the time we got there, couldn't really argue, we took it and it was the only um, pitch left on the site and we soon discovered the reason it was the only pitch left because there was a tree beside us with a hornet's nest in it. Uh, <laughs> it was so stressful. Um, the campsite people came around and sprayed something to get rid of the hornets but it was it was just a very cramped, uh, uncomfortable stay. Um, we stayed in, in Brittany for about a week. The weather was a bit dreary, but not awful. Um, then we drove down to the Loire Valley and the weather certainly improved there. So we were away 10 days in all. So this was after about the first week. We drove down to the Loire and it was boiling hot, which was absolutely lovely after the rain in Brittany but no air conditioning in the van, so it was super hot. Um, we had to sort of repack the van 
um, get to the Loire. We had a lovely campsite there, which was the exact opposite to the first one. There was loads of space, huge, huge pitch, um, well spaced out, absolutely lovely. But it was an absolute hitch to get to the toilet blocks. And yeah, the kids just got bored. Me, if it had been me and Richard, we we would have loved it because you could walk into the local village. Um, it was on a vineyard, so they did wine lessons and wine tasting there, which we did. We loved that. There was a swimming pool, but it was a bit of a small one. So the kids quickly got bored and yeah, everyone got a bit grumpy. Um, and then we, we got home and then, yeah, we, we sailed from Roscoff back to Plymouth and by the end of it, um, I, I, I'm usually a good sailor. But that ferry crossing, I don't know whether it was something I'd eaten just before we left, but I was, I didn't feel well on the crossing. But as soon as we got to Plymouth, I was violently ill all the way home. <laughs> so all in all, that goes down as the worst trip. Having said that, the kids absolutely hated it and they, they've all said it was the worst holiday they've ever done. Um, I wouldn't have minded if it had been a cheap holiday, but because I wanted to splash out a bit to it, have a bit of comfort. I bought a radio um, for the van, which is one that's never been very good, so complicated to tune in and everything. Um, so that was a complete waste of money. Um, I bought a breakdown cover, which was another couple of hundred pounds. It would have been so much cheaper for us to go on an all-inclusive somewhere in Europe, which, yeah, for, with three teenagers, that probably would have been better. But having said that, we do have a laugh now when we think about some of the times um, over there. The kids laugh that we bought this cheese and on the hot campsite in the Loire, we hired from the site. You could hire fridges to go on your pitch. So we hired a fridge, stuck all our lovely French cheese in there. And the kids were sleeping in the awning where the, the fridge was. And that's all they go on about is the smell. <laughs> Even if the fridge door was shut, the smell of all these cheeses made them just sick the whole time. So it's things like that. I think those holidays often are the ones that you remember, whereas we've done lots of kind of Europe hotel stays, which they all meld into one, really. They all, they're lovely at the time, but you can't really remember anything of it. So, yes, I think that's the worst. But if it had been me and Richard, we'd have loved it. We'd have had a great time. I think it was just my ambition for a jolly camper van holiday with three teenage kids um, was a little ambitious, really, and I was probably a bit naive as to um, <laughs> boredom levels for teenagers. And second part of Maureen's question, um, the best trip in the van. And that's a really difficult one because every trip I've done, I've really enjoyed. I think probably the one that sticks in my mind now is the one I did this last summer, 2020, the awful year. Um, and I think it's because we'd had our freedom. We'd been lock in lockdown and I'd been doing videos on the driveway and it felt like we were never going to be able to get away. And the first trip I did, it was to the little farm campsite in Hereford. And it just felt freedom, you know, it felt really lovely. And it was on a, a site, and uh, but it's a nice rural site, so that was certainly good. And then the trip, a couple, um, couple of months after that, it was over the summer, and I stayed, it's on another vlog, I'll put the link, and I stayed for free, or I think I paid £10 for three nights, something like that. I went to Chepstow, and I stayed in car parks the whole time, and I did Tintern, and the Tintern was absolutely stunning. It just happened to be one of those days where I woke up, it was gonna be a hot, hot day, blue sky, but there was like the early morning mist all around the Abbey and I was the only one in the car park. And again, it was post lockdown, so it just felt free and just, yeah, I think that probably goes down um, as one of the good ones because from there, I went towards Abergavenny and I went to visit these, um, little wells and um, that that was really quite a special experience but yeah there's there's so many to mention really the 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 good trips definitely outweigh the bad trips that's for sure 
and I'm hoping there'll be many more to come. <laughs> Good thing sitting um, in here, cosy inside. I can uh, keep an eye on my bongo out there, it's lovely. I'm seeing the snow swirling all around it. Oh, well, it stopped snowing and the snow that had fallen is pretty much melted. So it's just cold and a bit grey looking out there now. But nice and cosy indoors where I have been all afternoon. And I must admit I've enjoyed answering these questions. It's been really nice. And so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put another question out over Instagram over the next month and hopefully get a few more questions in. So please look out for that or add your questions in the comment section below. Back to the questions I was asked over this last month. Pick and mix nom nom. I love that name. <laughs> Fantastic name. Asked on Instagram. What's the longest trip you've done in a bongo in time, not distance? It's the same trip I talked about on the last question. We went to France <clears throat> with the teenagers and it was 10 days in all. Um, which isn't that long, really. Um, we didn't even make a fortnight. It felt longer than 10 days. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the longest trip so far. I'm planning on doing a lot longer than that, but it'll be just me in the van or me and Richard, so I think it'll be more bearable. Um, and we've learnt a lot in the last few years about storage and, and what to take. So I think our next trip will be a lot less hassle, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> next question from Mark Thompson. In your medium to long-term travel plans, might you consider upgrading the bongo to a bigger camper or motorhome? And if so, have you got anything particular in mind? Well, me and Richard have always said that when we retire, which we're hoping to do before we're 60, definitely. 55 was the age we, we said we'd like to, and that'll be next year for us both. Um, we did want to sort of travel more long-term, not live in the van, but travel for a good few months. And we always said at that stage we would want a bigger van <clears throat> so that we can be more off-grid and get more power, solar, etc. But now the time has come a little bit closer. I don't think I'm quite ready yet. I still love the van. I've been spending, as you know, quite a lot of money on the van over the last 12 months. And I don't think we're at the stage yet where we're ready to go traveling long term as yet. So I'm thinking, I'm really hoping that the bongo will last at least five years. Uh, mechanically, everything can be fixed, so I'm fine, reasonably confident, because it's still quite a low mileage van. Um, <clears throat> but it's the bodywork, and as I've always said before, when they come over to the UK, they do start to rot, it seems, um, no matter how careful you are. So as long as the bodywork holds out, I would hope to get another five years out of the bongo. Um, unless the situation drastically changes. I think the pandemic situation has changed as well and we're all a bit less gun-ho about travelling over to Europe, I suppose, with the Brexit thing as well. So, yeah, I'd like to get five more years out of the bongo. But we have always said we would like to upgrade and we... Not a motorhome. <clears throat> We've had a look... It's quite a few motorhomes when we've kind of seen them in garages. And they, they are quite a good price, really, for what you get. You seem to get a lot of um, space. But what I find with the motorhome, generally, is um, it's a bit like a caravan. And you don't really feel like you're outdoors because there's always this little tiny door to get in and out. Um <clears throat> And that's the one thing I like about camper vans is the slidey door, the swish swish as I call it on the side, so that if you pull up on a campsite or anywhere else for that matter and you've got a great view, I love opening the side door and you're in the van, 
but you, you feel like you're outside and you've got that great view. Um, and with other camper vans, sometimes you've got, or the tailgate up, you know, you, you feel like you're, you're outside, you've got lots of sort of light and air coming in. And what I've always found with the motorhomes is you don't get that because they've got a very small door um, <clears throat> on them. So, yeah, I think probably a motorhome wouldn't be. And the type of travelling that we want to do in the future will be a little bit off-grid. And so I don't think the motorhome will be the right vehicle for us. So what we've always said is we love the um, the Fiat Doblo is it the Doblo? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Or the Peugeot Boxer type vans and getting them custom designed or buying one that's already been done. Um, less plastic inside and having it more nice, reclaimed wood. I love looking at the Quirky Campers site. Um, they've got all sorts of vans that have been built around the UK and then they rent them out and then they, they sell them off at the end and there's some really amazing looking vans there. <clears throat> I love looking at the YouTubers and Project Amber is one. I love watching this guy. He's one of the ones who's gone off to Portugal to buy land at the moment. Um, but he's got a converted ambulance and, and that really appeals to me. I we I don't think me and Richard would be doing the work ourselves or the majority. I certainly wouldn't. Um, so I wouldn't mind getting a, a, an ambulance and then getting someone trustworthy to convert it. Um, so yeah, a bit, bit more of a sort of um, more all-terrain vehicle or something that can cope with eventually when we get to the continent, some nice off-road. Um, and as I said, something that's got the capability to have a mount, good amount of solar on it. And more space, really. And, a, and an inside bathroom would be fantastic. So looking forward, that would be where we want to go. It feels so disloyal saying that when I got my bongo sitting there glaring at me out of the corner of my eye. Um, I'm, I'm, as I said, I, I've still got long... Many years yet, well, five years is, is my goal for the van. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be, um, that'll do us proud for now. I still haven't done Europe in this van properly the way I want to do it, and I'm hoping I will be able to do that. And I love watching the Expoers as well. They're brilliant, and they've got a van, probably a little bit bigger than a Bongo, but they've got a Transit, and it's quite old, and it just keeps going, and I love their channel. And they seem to go off road. It is a diesel van though, but they, they seem to sort of go off all over the place. So again, it is that balance between the small van that you can park in a normal car park. And then, you know, although the, the height, you've still got the, the footprint of it is, is like a car. Um, the bigger the van you go, the more difficult it is to get into car parks and, and supermarkets and things. But yeah. So it's a difficult decision, but yeah, long term, a bigger van would be great. Not a motorhome, but long live the bongo. And that's the end. I've run out of questions, guys. So I'm sure some of you can think of other things you want to know. Um, <clears throat> what time is it now? It is, and it's still light. It's half past four. And I've got to finish off my cooking for the evening. <clears throat> Energy levels are flagging now, so I think that's just about time to round off. I'm always in bed these days by nine o'clock. <laughs> uh, and Richard is as well, actually. We've kind of got into a routine where we, we go to bed really early and we're up early. And the weekends, that's the other thing I've found since working full time. The weekends just fly. I mean, Friday night, you're just washed up. Saturday is your first day off. And then by Sunday, you're just chilling out and relaxing. And it's time to go back to work again. But anyway, I can't complain. And <clears throat> I will be doing another video in a month's time. Unbelievably, the good news is the next video will be out in March, which is incredible. We're, we're into spring then, guys. <laughs> um, I haven't been very active on my Instagram, I must admit. For all the reasons I've talked about earlier, mainly I'm just too tired and there seems to be very little to to say on my stories because I'm either in work or I'm sleeping. Um, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, it would be absolutely great. I do put things on usually on the weekend, 
but please continue to subscribe to the channel. I think I've got 450 subscribers at the moment, so I'm halfway to my thousand, which is my first goal. So please like and subscribe and please continue to watch. Please add comments, love reading them and responding to them. And stay safe everybody, look after yourselves and I will see you in March. Take care, bye. Thank you.